Great. Okay. Well, um, once again, thanks everyone for joining us tonight. It's great to see you all. Um, and uh, <laughs> welcome to uh, the latest installment in McCrosty's uh, mid-month artist talk series. We're really excited to have Carlin Berg here with us tonight. Um, the session will be recorded and we will be posting it on our website after the fact. So you can view it there or on our YouTube page um, and share it around if you know anyone else who might like to see it. And the exhibit, um, Carlin's exhibit, Unfolding Odyssey is on display at McCrosty Art Center through the month of May. And you can see um, the works from her latest series as well as several other series that she'll be talking about this evening um, that are on display. And you can see them in the gallery or on our website at mccrostyartcenter.org. Um, just a few notes, as I said before, um, if you'd like to unmute yourself and ask any questions throughout, I'm sure Carlin would be happy to take those as they come, or we can also have some time at the end for questions. Um, and comments as well. And um, I will be running the slideshow. So pardon me if I'm a little uh, distracted, but I will try my best to keep an eye on uh, the waiting room and um, any questions folks have. You can also pop questions into the chat if you have them. And um, yeah, looks like we've got a nice group and I'm looking forward to hearing more about Carlin's work and a nice discussion tonight. So thanks again. And so I will pull up the slideshow and then Carlin, you can take it from there. Okay. Okay, and oh, that's, I'm not sharing my screen. It doesn't help much if I don't share my screen. <laughs> the last few times uh, we had, the artists had their own slideshow, so I haven't, uh... there we go. Okay, hopefully that will work and I will make it, uh... Are you moving the slides, Katie, or am I yep, supposed to? I will, I will move them. I'm just trying to get the speaker video up so it... That... Yeah, I don't want to touch anything because I'm liable to. Yeah, you don't have to touch anything. All you have to do is talk, so you can okay. take it away. Okay. And there. There we go. Okay. So I just started with some photos of the exhibit. Um, what was it going to... Oh, sorry, folks. I'm a little rusty on this. It's going to just advance. I need to do. Well, David did a wonderful job hanging them because uh, especially that big one was very hard. Um, yes. To hang up and we'll see a picture of that one in a moment. This one, the panoramic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can see one couldn't fit in the line, <laughs> but I think I think we managed it. Okay. Oh, the messy studio. <laughs> and the tiny space notice. <laughs> so um, did you want, Carolyn, did you want to start off by talking a little bit about some of the, um, the history of collage and you were going to talk a little bit about your process and whatnot? Sure. Too, so. Yeah. yeah, because um, that's one thing that always frustrates me about the word collage, because immediately people start thinking scrapbooking kind of images and things. And there's so much of that around. And I think a lot of people don't realize that it's actually um, an art form that goes way far back. Most got prominence during the Dada period, like when guys like Kurt Schwitters and others um, started working in that manner. And they did it really in order to... Um, uh, take away from the uh, the tightness of the art world at the time. They were, they wanted, they were radicals at the time. And matter of fact, the very first collage uh, that one of them created was to tear up a newspaper and drop it on the floor and then glue it together. And it was really almost like a, a way of saying, hey, you know, art is bigger than this. And then people like Picasso and stuff started up with it. So it is a long standing um, art form. It's not, you know, uh, like we have today with all these crafty things. And it's very frustrating to think of it as crafty, um, especially because um, I know I personally like working in collages as a painting um, and I've never changed from that. I've always thought of them as full paintings that happen to have images that I've cut up. And so you can see, um, also I think people think you get 10 
images and you slide them around and eventually glue them down. Um, but I thought it'd be interesting to show you the what the studio looks like because all those containers you see have images that I've cut. And uh, a lot of the images that I use are actually the things, the outer edges of stuff that um, I cut out the image and I thought, hey, this background is even better than the image. So then I go with that. And uh, so I don't throw anything away, which I think my studio displays, because you never know if that little piece of garbage cut out might be the highlight of the next collage. So I save them. Um, I made an effort to, you can kind of see in that set of drawers, I made an effort to put the reds in one drawer and the blues in the other and the yellows. Well, that that lasts about a half hour. Um, it's never stays the same. Matter of fact, my basement right now, which is where my studio is, has a mess of things that I've cut that I've got to start kind of categorizing again, sorting them out so that when I start up a new painting, um, I can find them and easier. So you can kind of see how I shift things around. Um, I do use small scissors. Um, whoop, that was a good lucky slide, right? When I said that. Um, and uh, a lot of people use uh, an exacto knife or a knife. I find that just, I don't know, I always feel like the cut goes further than I want. I, I have more control with a scissor. And so I, I do everything with a scissor. And it's, uh, I try to be very meticulous, which is part of something I really believe in. I don't want it to look like I slopped it together. So I kind of go overboard on detail. So if there's a little corner, I want it a real good corner. And uh, I usually do my cutting at night. Um, I put on some Brit Box good TV show and I cut and cut and cut and cut. And I listen to a story while I'm doing it and uh, until I just really can't see anymore. And then I quit. So that's kind of how they come about. And you can see in this one, um, I did start using gold leaf in that series, Nature Transformed, uh, which goes back, that was a Minnesota State Arts Board project. And I really um, enjoyed working with it. And this last set, when, when we look closer, this is all gold, gold leaf, and uh, not real gold, not 24 karat. But um, I started using um, some colored ones. I really wanted to try different textures and tones and whatever, and blacks and what they call black and green um, gold leaf. Um, silver, I've tried silver. That's my least favorite. I don't know, I find that difficult, but I'm going to make myself use it more. And then um, I never used one of those that had a lot of textures in it where they heat it and change it. But I did do that in this last series. I decided to get brave and say, okay. So that's kind of how I do it. And uh, hopefully some of you have gotten in to see the exhibit in person, because one thing about collage, it's very hard to photograph. The texture and the depth does not show up in a, a slide. It's just not possible, no matter how hard you try. So that's the big one that I just finished. Um, I got a notion to try to do a giant panel, a whole series. Obviously, I think we figured out that thing was over 67 inches long or something. Anyway, it's huge because that wall, I think, is a 16 foot wall. And then we couldn't fit the last one that's on the bend there. But um, I did do it in panels because number one, I can transport them when they're, if they were all one, it would be impossible to, to do. And so um, we ended up doing them as I did separate panels. And that way, eventually they'll get sold separately because I knew that nobody's gonna buy this giant 16 foot thing. So I kind of did it that way. And actually I'm gonna start working on a top layer, another layer that'll go above those. Uh, the first one you see to the, uh, to the left there with the single horse. Uh, that one, if you look at the upper edge, that's the gold leaf I was talking about that has texture. I was just afraid it would get too gimmicky, but somehow it, I felt like it worked with that one because, um, and then the, these panels I started out with, you can see a very rich, dark orange, yellow colors. And as you go across to the right, I gradually changed to pink. I wanted to make it um, kind of transform over. And so the, you can sort of see that it gets a pale yellow and then it gets a little more of a green yellow. And then I kind of went across that way. Um, some people ask me about um, how I pick the images. Um, actually everything in the collages that I do are, I choose them by color. 
uh, by a shape or a picture or something that I really like, you know, just because it appeals to me. Um, if you back up one, Katie, if you can, I don't know if you can, I can do that. Um, you can see like this little guy, oh, I'm pointing to it like my finger is going to show up. <laughs> um, there's a little guy who looks like he's falling off the horse. Um, you know, I found him and I just said, oh, I really like him. <laughs> he's going to go somewhere. And he ended up there. So um, I pick out my pieces according to what amuses me or what I like the textures. Uh, I choose a lot of natural things that might be sea life. Um, I do use a lot of animals in nature because again, that's a favorite subject of mine. Um, a lot of my stuff is from Renaissance pieces, little pieces from that or China or uh, Japan. So I have no uh, one thing or the other. I mean, I just pick patterns and colors and stuff that appeal to me. And so you will see a lot of insects and animals in my stuff um, and uh, snakes, <laughs> I like snakes a lot. Uh, then again, this one here, these all have snakes or there's a lot of sea life in there too. Um, uh, and I don't, I don't pick anything to, you know, I hope that they kind of end up being meaningful just because of the color and the imagery. And I, you know, I'm hoping that it's a space. So I think most of my paintings are kind of landscapes, even though they're not naturalistic landscapes, but I think of them as landscapes. I think of them as places. And, um, and then this, this is where we graduated over to the pinks. Uh, pinks I find are the hardest to work with. And um, I will choose colors sometimes that are ones I'm not as, you know, really liking as much in order to push myself to try something different. Uh, because if you stay in the same, like, you know, you love blues and yellows or whatever, if you stay with that, they'd all start to look the same. So I forced myself to use uh, colors that, uh, like when I painted the background of these, um, I painted the pink and then it got kind of garish and I work on it, work on it until I can stand it. And then I start putting on the, um, the other colors and objects. And I just, it just happens. Um, there's really no chosen plan for them. They evolve. They have to evolve as I go because I find a piece. And then there's a lot of pieces I might say, oh, wow, this is a great piece. I can hardly wait to put this in a collage. And then I'll put it in and it'll be the piece that I end up pulling out because it no longer fits. You know, know there's So what I get rid of out of a painting is just as important as what I ended up putting in and moving them around. So that's the way that kind of works uh, on that. And I tried to make them so they linked up with images that were next to each other. Um, so they would they would actually move uh, in a direction together, but they did not have to be exact. You know, if, um, it was more of a, now this is where I'm also starting to use darker um, gold leaf. So I kind of, I also tried to make that a transition as well. And I don't, is there one more or is that the last one? Did we, I guess, you, oh, no, okay, you put it together. I see how you did it. Okay, good, cool. <laughs> well, this one is from, um, oh, this is from the Nature uh, Envision series. And, uh, you know, I don't know what nature I was envisioning <laughs> this one, uh, but um, I did call it um, a, just kind of a, a bizarre kind of name. Gee, I even forgot the name um, of what it is. But anyway. Um, at any rate, this is again with these. I kind of started out there. Old leaf. What is it? Oh, I was just going to uh, say six dimension. Shape shifting in the sixth dimension. Yes. Right. Okay. Or so, yes. six extinction. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. And don't ask me what that means. I don't know. Sometimes I see something and, I, and my mind just goes in that direction. Um, and this one too. You know, I, it was kind of some different colors that I used. Green is not one of my favorites, but somehow there it was. You know, and, and it worked. You know, and so I try to really force myself. Uh, and then in this one here, I also wanted the gold leaf to be just in part, and hopefully, um, I think it worked. And then the purple was really fun. So I really enjoy doing you know these things. I mean, I just have so much fun when I put them together. Um, I will get them all kind of arranged. Uh, I used to put mylar over them to hold the pieces so that they wouldn't blow away or shift too much. That didn't work too good because then that mylar has static. And when you lift it up, yeah, everybody moves. So then that's a disaster. So I kind of tack them down gently because then I'll leave them sit for a day or two and then return to see. Uh, and that's when you really see if there's a piece that, oh my gosh, you wonder how come I put that in? And then I'll pull it out and shift it. You can go to another, Katie. Oh, this is the luminous. Yeah, uh, this is one of my favorites too. Um, 
and it, well, because it's again a lot of my favorite colors. But I really, with this set of paintings, I really started to work much more with paint behind the collage so it wouldn't be flat. And uh, that was real exciting to do, but also very hard. The bottom part in brown is actually textured. It's got, um, which you can't, again, you can't really see. It was a, uh, a paint that has depth to it. And so it's thick, very thick and textural. So that was the dirt ground. I don't always do like where there's a dirt ground and then, you know, a bit of, and then the sky, the sky in this case is uh, gold. But um, again, I just pick images and colors. So I would say the things that really drive me are the shapes, um, the color is real important. I, I really love working in color and um, I feel like I have an eye for color. And then um, of course the images that I like, birds and insects and stuff like that. Oh, this Remedios, yeah. This is from the Marquez, uh, Garcia Marquez series. That started me off on this because when I was listening to his book in the car, 100 Years of Solitude, um, oh my gosh, there were just so many images and so wonderful. Now I never try to illustrate a book or a poem or a, um, a song lyric or whatever. I'm not trying to illustrate them, but they set me off on a path. And so I might, um, I mean, I had to have Remedios in there. So she is flying in the sky, which is part of the book. <laughs> she does fly up in the sky. But uh, so I'm not really trying to illustrate them, but I, I try to pick up a feeling or something and then the pieces um, just pull themselves together. So it's not as if I have to have a specific image. And I will take them out of it. Every once in a while, if I try to make something fit, I say, oh my gosh, I realize it's starting to look kind of cliche or gaudy. So I, I really will pull that out. And I guess we can go to the next one. We can always go back if we have to. This one's from the song series, um, which I did for ARAC. And um, this is based on uh, Bob Dylan's um, Blue, Tangled Up in Blue. And it probably has nothing much to do with Bob Dylan, but it's got a lot of blue. <laughs> There's snakes tangling it up, or dragons. So I guess I guess that's the closest we get to the title. Uh, but again, uh, these are all pieces. A lot of these pieces are background pieces, and um, I will uh, not only print them off. I'll find things and print them off. I might scan some, um, and then I will print them. But I I've gotten where I'm really starting to. Um, change the colors to fit what I want. Because um, sometimes I have a favorite image, but I don't wanna keep using the same guy, you know, so I might just change his color and cut him up some more. And uh, I keep the original things that I'm working from so I can use them again in other paintings. And I don't worry about that too much. Uh, in that big panel series I did, there was a lot of repetition of shapes and items I put in because I did want that to kind of help connect the painting. You know, I wanted those pieces to be kind of bleed you across and it shows the image might show up again, but it might show up in an entirely different color. And that was fine. So, and this one has some old pieces. This was also from this um, song series. This was based on Patti Smith's punk song, Horses, Horses, Horses. It's not a very punk looking painting. <laughs> and now I've got it in my head to do another triptych for the three horses, 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 but do it more punk and more modern and more um, abstract. And I can hardly wait to do that. I think that'll be another trip because I really like working in these triptychs and diptychs, um, having them try to connect with each other. That's That's been a challenge. This was the first one I did. Um, and I really um, had a lot of fun with it that they would connect together. Um, horses are a favorite image of mine. Some of the images are favorites too, because I can cut them. Uh, I love dogs, but there's very few dogs I can actually use in some of these because they've got fur and they're just sort of impossible. To, and I did find that one little antique one that I used in the new panel. And so I was kind of delighted to have a dog in there <laughs> for a change. I found a few of those. So I'm still always hunting and uh, trying to find, find images. Um, this one here, Eagle and Weasel Fights Back. This is um, interesting because it actually comes from an older book uh, that then Annie Dillard included the story in her book, Pilgrimage to Tinker, Tinker, Tinker's Creek. And then um, Laurie Anderson made a song, which is from an album Red. So it is kind of from the song series, but it really generates originally from a book um, about the uh, 
they saw this eagle flying overhead and the um, weasel was hanging from its neck. So the eagle had swooped down to get the eagle. The weasel fought back and hung onto his neck, but of course then was dragged up into the sky and obviously wasn't gonna survive. And what they saw was the, the skeleton of the, the eagle hanging on. Now exactly how accurate that little depiction is, I don't know, but um, I thought, oh wow, what a great image. So, um, I really fell in love with eagles and weasels doing this one. Um, and in her song, I did put some illustration because she does talk about herself um, and uh, her boyfriend with the red pickup and things like that. So there's some lyric things that I snuck in there because I thought they just uh, interested me. Um, and the snakes crept in again because they're, they're always fun. Uh, Linda Budrow over at Wings and Willows, your stories say you and your snakes because <laughs> she, she had to frame them, frame them for me. And she always kind of freaked out. So that was one that I enjoyed doing. And I don't know if we have, oh, this one here. Oh, this one comes from a song. This is Six, Wild, uh, Six White Horses um, Come to Take You Home. This is based on a Tom Cash, Johnny Cash's brother's song, which was written um, for Martin Luther King and the two Kennedy brothers who were assassinated and that six white horses would take them home that they didn't have time to sing their full song. And it's wonderful lyrics. Um, and I can always send it to you if you're interested. Uh, that I happened to see it on TV um, on a show where um, someone sang it as Stuart, um, what's his name? Marty Stewart sang it. And I was just so moved by the song. Um, I just had to make a painting of it. So that's it, that's what I did. <laughs> and I don't know if it expresses it. This is from the series that I did with Bended Wood. Um, I spent the summer twisting wood. I built a steamer out and put it on my picnic table and steamed wood almost all summer, twisting them, whatever. Um, having a lot of failure woods as well as pieces that worked out good. Um, I twisted quite a few of them and then put them in the painting, uh, emerged them into what I wanted to try, having a more three-dimensional um, aspect to the collage. Uh, this one I think works real well. I have a couple that I've grown to hate, uh, so um, I will either bust them up <laughs> or, or I will start them over again. And then um, I think the ones I brought to the Mac were my favorite ones. You know, there's uh, that bright pink one and everything else. Um, I think what I will try to do, because I still have a lot of wood, and this summer I might steam some more and twist some more, is actually reverse how I did this painting. This painting, I did all the painting first, and then I put on the wood. I think what I'm going to do is put a lot of wood on it next time, and then paint and add the collage. And maybe the um, where this one works, some of the others didn't, um, because I didn't want the pieces of wood to be arbitrary. And I felt like a couple of those did come out where the wood addition to the wood was arbitrary. So again, it was just a challenge and trying something else, though um, I did like it. Um, everybody kind of loves the elephants. How can you not like an elephant, right? <laughs> so I think what, um, oh, there was one person who said to me, I don't know why they cost so much. Well, I was really irritated because if she knew how many elephants I had to cut to get that done. <laughs> and I now have a stash of elephants that you wouldn't believe, which will all get used sooner or later, there will be more elephants coming down the pike. Uh, but I'm very particular about the size and the tint and the tone and whatever. So uh, if they don't fit, I redo an elephant. And then I sit there and do those little tiny tusks and little trunks and everything. And I want them to be good. This one again has wood in it. This painting actually started upside down. I had the, I wanted to have the silver leaf at the bottom. And uh, boy, I just fought with it and fought with it. And I was just ready to throw the whole thing out. And then I just turned around upside down. And I went, oh. This is going to work. <laughs> so, so you never know. Collage is, like I say, very transformative and just has to evolve. And I don't think we have any others. Oh, yeah, we got to say, I've been really lucky to get grants from both the state, Minnesota State Arts Board, and the Arrowhead Regional. And um, it's really important to give that credit. Uh, I wouldn't be able to do this work if it wasn't for them. And I think um, I think those are all the images I included in this slideshow, Carlin. So I didn't know. Um, I can certainly pull up the full gallery show if people wanted to see more of that. But I thought maybe you'd. I don't know if you wanted to talk more about um, different techniques in some of them, or if there are any other um, pieces you wanted me to go back to to highlight. Um, well, maybe some people have some questions or want to know about a particular one. Um, sure, yeah, and that might be might be good. So I'm not just rambling on about stuff. Yes, absolutely. So yeah, folks, if you want to um, unmute and uh, 
chime in with any questions or if there's any other pieces you'd like to see a little uh, more closely, I can. I can and if they have a question about a particular one, we just kind of flew by. That'd mm -hmm. be fine. Too. Anyone got a question? Well, I, I would just like to make a comment. This is Linda. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I just find these pieces so fascinating. And I'm, I'm just curious, um, what, I, I'm just really intrigued about your process. I mean, to me, well, well, first of all, I love that you incorporate these musical songs into a painting. What a beautiful concept. That's, I just love how you brought two arts together. I, I don't know how you came up with that, but this also reminds me of like the magical realism writing that maybe you have uh, read. It's just, it's so, it's so mysterious to me and I'm really drawn into it. I just, I want to like dive into it every single one i i just am so intrigued it's i've never seen anything like this it's thank you very much and you know in fact that the first series the nature what i call the nature series is from magical realism that was what really started me off after i read that one book a uh, hundred years of solitude then i went to the leaf storm then i dug out some of the other people that wrote in that realm and what attracted me about it because when i'd be driving along and there would be you know one of his fanciful things I thought, oh wow, he's he's basically doing collage in in a wow. way, verbal collage. And I mean, because I could see his images, you know, when he's talking about that. And I just I could see them as collages. And that really excited me. And I will probably go back to his work again because there, there were so many rich images in that. Um, and so that's kind of how that happens. And I don't know why I, I have to say that my husband looked at one of my paintings um, in the show, that luminous one, and he said, what kind of mind thinks of this? <laughs> so it struck me really funny. That's the first artistic thing he's ever said to me. <laughs> but and I thought, I don't know what kind of mind thinks of this stuff. Uh, but, uh, and it just happens. You know, I see images and they, it makes sense to me when I'm putting them together. I, and I do love getting them from songs or whatever. The next series, I'm hoping to do some haiku poetry, include that. Um, and see how that works, you know. And it, it doesn't have to, like I say, illustrate a particular poem. It might be an image. I'll say, "Oh wow, I got to, I got to deal with that image." And so, um, and I, I write them down. I keep a notebook, like, oh, "Don't forget this." Usually, I'm writing these notes in the car, <laughs> also I'll be killed doing this. But that's 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 a really that's a good creative technique. Secondly, I, I'd love to know your background. Um, do you have an art background? Like, did you study art in this? Yes, I, well, actually, I've been painting since I was a kid. And I know here's, here's something crazy I'll reveal to all of you, a secret that I don't tell too many people. But when I was an infant, um, I'm from New York City, and um, my, I would be in the playpen or something, and my mother would want to, you know, get me to do something so she could be busy vacuuming or whatever she was doing. She would throw a magazine to me, and I would sit in that playpen and I would throw that magazine up. <laughs> I decided that's my collage, original collages, because I sit there, and of course I couldn't read. Um, I was an infant, and I would look at the pictures, and I'd tear out pictures, and I'd look at the pictures, and someday it dawned on me. I thought, oh, it's kind of what in in the way I view things. And when I, to this day, when I go through a magazine, I will see those <laughs> pictures and those shapes before I might even read the article. So I do think that's where I started. And then of course in school and high school, I was doing all the art stuff that, you know, art classes do. And then uh, I had a wonderful art teacher in high school who helped me put together my portfolio. And um, because I wanted to go to Rhode Island School of Design and um, with his help, really with his, helping put together a portfolio. I did get into Rhode Island School of Design. Wow. Um, and then um, that was, of course, great years, you know. And then I moved back to the city by myself <clears throat> during the Janis Joplin era. <laughs> <laughs> and I lived in the Lower East Side and we were all artists, poor, <laughs> thinking we were gonna get somewhere. So um, yeah, I've been painting my whole life. So that's kind of thank you. That's so fascinating. I think about your experience as an infant as that experience I would call imprinting. Yes. We, we are being imprinted 
throughout our lives. Yeah, I, th I think that's true. And color. And then my dad, you know, he was um, a, a really interesting fellow. He was an explorer and he traveled all over the world and he just had many, many things. Wow. To do. But um, when I wanted to get oil paints, um, I had seen a big box, you know, with every color in the world in it. And he bought me that box. And then he said, you, you will get these paint, all these paints uh, when you learn how to mix them. And then he gave me red, yellow, and blue white and black and said when you can mix all those colors then you can have the big box with all the colors in it so i wanted that paint box <laughs> and i think that really has helped me uh, learn color and you know and of course i used it you know throughout my career as an artist um so again i think that that trial all those childhood experiences made a difference and i wish we had more art in schools today yes you know, really thank you does anyone else have a question or? Yeah, I do, Carolyn. Do you, what about size? Um, are, have you ever done smaller works or, or why do you do things the size you do? Well, I have a lot of small works I did and they're almost more, um, they're not as painterly. They're like collages. They're more like collages. And I have some that are really my favorites. I really enjoyed. Then I went, I kind of crept up in size Mm -hmm. um, to like um, oh, eight by eight, 12 by 12. You know, I kind of was growing with those, but I have a lot of them that are like seven by, you know, five little mm -hmm. small ones. And every once in a while I go back to those because it's, I help, I like changing size. It helps me kind of regroup. So I'm not always doing just big giant things. Mm -hmm. And then um, matter of fact, at the springboard I had, um, the summit that was here when the springboard had that i had a consultant and i went to him because i thought well these big paintings here these are all 25 by 24 those are the biggest ones i i do uh, partially out of logistics i don't have a place for that and then by doing triptychs and things i can get bigger paintings in a sense mm -hmm. because i'm doing them in parts but um mm -hmm. i think this next series i'm going to drop back down the guy from springboard told me he because um, i was talking about sales and how to you know get myself to be able to sell paintings and he said don't reduce the caliber of your work or the quality of your work don't go do you know pop boilers like they call them um but start making some small ones that people can afford and uh, so i think i'm going to try that um and i don't know i'm trying to make up my mind whether I'm, the next series is going to be 16 by 16s or 18 by 18s um, but i also have a whole bunch of eight by eight canvases mm -hmm. just sitting there waiting for me <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so one of those days i'll do those you know um but i think i will try doing it it changes your whole um it really does change what you're doing in be, you know the size because mm -hmm. you have to deal with all different things on the canvas to make the canvas go together and will you say something about um the gold and the silver why you went to um that um as part of your work i think the one that started me up was that eagle uh the um uh katie do you have that one available the uh man with enormous wings i can, can pull one? it up <laughs> yeah you got it check around with that while we talk <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that was the first one I did um, because that one somehow just seemed like it should have gold in it. I don't know, mm -hmm. Barbara. It's just I get a notion, yeah. uh, you know, that it's just like I got a notion to use the wood, which was maybe a mistake. <laughs> well, I don't but think I was going to try it again. <laughs> when I was I, twisted up. Yeah, I saw yeah, you yeah, show was, at uh, Ripple River with the wood, and it was interesting. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, there was. There was, I like the pink one is one of my favorites. Um, and that was the most, you know, I just chose the most horrible pink I could find to start mm -hmm. that one. And then, oh, now, and then all of a sudden, oh, I think this is one of my favorites. <laughs> so I never know. I think you have to do that. You have to just jump off the cliff and mm -hmm. hope that something comes with it, you know. And I will redo some of those because there were some of them I didn't like. And, um, but it was worth it. And when I finished that series, I thought, God, I never want to see another piece of bent wood again. But then when I started looking at them, I thought, you know, I could do this. Or I could do that. I should have done this. I should have done that. And that's great, you know, because I feel like I got somewhere to go with new stuff, you know, rather than feel trapped doing yeah. the same thing all the time. Yeah. So um, that was kind of it. I don't know if she can find it. 
<laughs> you don't have to. Now, now that you're done talking about it, I did just find it. So I'll, uh, I'll show oh, you. Okay. Yeah. You can <laughs> Whatever you got, you can put anything up and I just see where it's at. I think, so, I mean, I'm assuming some of you all went and saw the show um, over at the Mac. Yep. Um, and, uh, oh, that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's Bird, Birdland. Well, I call it Birdland and the Man with Enormous Swing. That's based on a um, Marquez story too, but from the Leaf. Uh, Leaf Storm book, um, The Man with Enormous Wings. And um, I just I just wanted him to be falling from the golden sky. I guess that's the first one that really got me going on the gold. And I really liked it. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you know, nobody's going to hire me to do gold leaf like on an ice frame because I just put it down any old way. <laughs> you know, and it's very difficult to work with. And uh, I did see, and I mentioned to Sandra, uh, one of the tips I got was uh, when people don't, can't do gold leaf, it's because they're afraid of it. And they, and so they said, don't fear the gold. <laughs> so I kind of go and I just lay it down and go for it. And, um, you know, then it, it, it ends up being okay. You know I mean? It's like, but when you're carrying, oh my gosh, don't sneeze around gold leaf, you know, don't, uh, don't have your dog around gold leaf. <laughs> <laughs> so, How do you get the lighter shading with the gold leaf? Well, this is, I think the light is shining on it. You mean where it's oh, lighter okay. over on the right? Yeah, that's probably the light. Yeah. So that's the one thing about it. It changes, you know, with, with the lighting. Uh, so it'll look lighter and darker depending on, the, depending on how you look at it. And uh, that's why I thought it was kind of fun to try some of those dark colors, like in the, um, the pink, the, the other series, the new series, mm -hmm. trying those and seeing if I could do that. So that this was probably the first one I did. And then I fell in love with it and just went with it. And, and I, in, mm -hmm. Oh, excuse me. Do you have a top coat on these? Um, oh, yeah. What do you finish them with? Yeah, well, when you do the gold leaf, you have to, because it's not real gold. You have to varnish it. I mean, it's got to be covered so the gold doesn't um, tarnish, because it will tarnish. Um, and actually, you could, which I'm going to do probably someday, you can tarnish it yourself and then you end up with some really interesting stuff, you know, like let it tarnish a little bit. You can tarnish it with fumes of ammonia and uh, that will be kind of fun. But you have to be really careful because it works really good and disintegrates the gold leaf. So, uh, you know, I think that'll be fun. But you have to varnish it. I varnish it quite a bit. Uh, and then the um, when I glue everything down, um, one of the problems with gold leaf and the varnish that I, if the glue um, seeps out, let's say under a paper image, I don't want that to show, like especially that puffer fish up there. I don't want glue to be squishing out of the side of it. I want the gold leaf in the paper to me. So I have to go really through each little spike and get it so it doesn't have junk squishing out of it. And then um, when I do finish all the paper stuff, I put a UV coating on it to try to, um, that's a, a gel, a golden matte gel. And I put that on it first to try to preserve so that the color will be as much UV protected as I can give it. And then I put a matte coating on top of that. Um, and I might put one or two on top of it. And it just makes it lay down. And I use, I tend to use matte surface. Um, I kind of like the contrast with the shiny of the gold and then the matte thing, the, again, the texture. Shiny, um, so like the shiny coating tends to uh, distract from the painting because it the shininess will then make make any, because there's lumps here. I mean, you know, you're painting layers on layers and you're gonna have thicknesses and changes. And then that looks crappy if it's, mm -hmm. if it's shining. So I, that's how I do it. And hopefully that keeps it all nice and tidy. <laughs> Uh, for, and I, when one thing nice about these clay boards is that uh, you can use the floating frame. They drop into the frame rather than the, the t traditional frame. Correct. And I do that myself then. Yeah. Anything else, guys? Any other questions? Have you ever done portraiture? Oh, uh, boy, a hundred years ago. You know, the only portraits I was doing, oops, I'm going to shut this off. Um, and you know it's ah, spam stuff. Um, uh, well, the only portraits that I've been doing in let's say the last maybe six years were dog portraits right. uh, for all my dog friends. Um, yeah, I'm not. I 
I did a portrait of myself a hundred years ago and you know, it was horrible, <laughs> but I do a lot of dog portraits. But and, you haven't, you haven't done collage with like a single figure or whatever. Oh, you mean a, a, a oh. person collaged in? Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think in this next series, I might try some of that because um, I'm struggling with what I want to present as a theme. Mm -hmm. um, so many places were doing pandemic paintings. And I thought, oh God, we've had enough of the pandemic. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to go off that deep end. Um, but I thought maybe I would try to get more figures in it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I probably won't draw them unless I find something I like. Mm -hmm. um, I have a huge collection of figures uh, that just haven't made it to a collage yet. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, every once I find one, I really like it. Um, so, um, you know, that I'll try that Barb, in the next bunch, <laughs> <laughs> which I'm anxious to start. Um, yeah. You know, I've got plenty of materials and that's one nice thing about collage. The, most of the paper stuff is free, except that in printing, oh my gosh, that costs a lot of money. That's where, where I get dinged, you know, mm -hmm. art wise. And, uh, and I, and paint. I've been using more and more paint, so which is kind of good. I did get um, uh, a silk screen um, photo machine, so I can uh, transfer photos uh, onto a, um, pl a plastic and then print. So that might be where I have more figures because mm -hmm. um, I want to try that, but I haven't had a chance. It's a big lighting thing and it's been sitting there and I've got to try to do that. Um, and then I'll print because I, oh, I do like a lot of printmaking and I thought it'd be interesting to do some silk screen stuff so I can uh, invent my own color. You know, if I don't have a piece, it's my color, I can print it myself. Mm -hmm. So that might happen. And it, that'll be pretty, you know, how silk screen is pretty flat textured. Mm -hmm. So that might work good. There's, there's a million things you can do with a collage, you know, <laughs> yeah, and, and I really, it, that's what makes it exciting. Does so anyone else got a question? I think uh, somebody did. I saw a thing. We had a, a comment from Karen. She said she'd love to see a collage with wolves in it. I know with your background, oh. uh, do you have any of your, I don't have any in the. Well, Barb's got my wolf one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Barb's got the wolves in the two that she got. Um, yeah. Uh, and those, those wolves, I could cut those wolves because they weren't totally hairy. You know, um, I will, I've probably got a few, but I tend, tend to go towards with some of those animals um, a little more abstract rather than let's say the typical wilderness pictures you see of wolves. You know, I, I don't think those would be pretty hard to put in. Uh, so I guess I tend to go get, uh, I have a lot of antique wolf things that I could probably utilize and will do someday. But a lot of those are black and whites too. And uh, so that might be nice in a smaller one where I can just do really paper collage and not worry about all the color. That, that's a possibility right there. Um, and of course, I, I have a lot of antique wool stuff because my when I came to Minnesota, I came here for the wolves. So um, I was a wolf lady too, <laughs> before I was a dog lady. <laughs> now I'm only a dog lady. <laughs> so, but I kept all those. And some of those are really historical things that would be really fun to put into a collage. Matter of fact, I did do one with coyotes um, for a uh, show that was about wildlife, how uh, wild animals live in the city. And um, I found a wonderful photograph of a coyote uh, that was on the subway in Oregon. And I thought, wow, talk about surviving in the city. He was taking the train. <laughs> and uh, it was such a great thing. So I got me started with that. Unfortunately, a lot of the other images in that collage were dead coyotes. So it was like the good, the bad, and the sad. <laughs> and it was a, but it's one of my favorite paintings, actually. But it's not a topic most people want to have hanging in their living room. Uh, but it's got some great orange in it. <laughs> so it's, it's one of my favorites. Uh, it just, and it, it, it emerges every once in a while I, I hang it up. <laughs> I bring it out. You know, but again, the topics, you know, it's, it's hard because you, I don't want to, um, I can't seem to make pretty pictures. You know, like at one time I thought, oh, this one will sell if I you know, make it pretty and all that. And it was such a terrible collage. I hated it. I hated it. And I, I tore it all up and I repainted it. And then it became 
pull of snakes again or something. <laughs> so <laughs> I guess I just don't do pretty uh, in the sense. Now, I think these are beautiful, but they're not really pretty. I don't, I guess you see what I'm talking about. Um, so I'm not um, cutesy that way. And then the other thing that I discovered in doing some history about women in art is how women were relegated to doing flowers when men could go do life paintings and nudes and everything else they were women were not even allowed to do that they had to more or less stay in the realm of doing flower pictures and um the men would sell their paintings in you know huge shows and the women were able to decorate hotels so um that's kind of discouraging isn't it <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I mean, gosh. So maybe that's why I have a hostility towards flower pictures. <laughs> Who knows? But uh, it's kind of interesting to read the history of women in art. And uh, and I just read an article about how, um, why are there no great women artists? Um, well, it's mostly men choosing that. So um, maybe that's my New York heritage and knowing the guerrilla girls in New York City uh, fighting for women's rights in the art world, which has yet to be met, you know, when it come right down to it. Uh, so we just have to keep going along <laughs> and doing our work. That's all you can do. And hopefully, hopefully get better. I mean, I hope I'm, I think I'm growing and stuff. So it'll be fun to go back to some of the old, the old ones. I'll have to show you some of my small ones, Barb, <laughs> one of these days. Have you ever used words in your work? Hmm, very seldom. Um, it creeps in once in a while if I like the image. I have that big one that is very abstract and I use part letters in that one. And everyone thinks it looks like a Russian <laughs> painting because it looks like the reverse R and everything. Uh, so <laughs> it does, it looks very Russian. I don't know how that happened. But um, yeah, every once in a while I'll find something. Uh, in my painting, um, Sky High to Shanghai, that was from an antique book that my father had from Shanghai. And I love the image of the dragons on it. And then I, um, of course, when I printed it, it was in reverse because then I did a transfer, um, uh, an acrylic transfer for that one. And uh, so then it was reverse and that was fine to me. I'm just, just as glad it wasn't forward reading. And then, um, so that one has lettering in it, but I don't pick words like love or, you know, and I, ref I don't use clocks very much because that's another, typical collage item so clocks don't show up you know like oh time clocks you know that's what oh. <laughs> so I try to avoid those somebody else sneak one in I don't know and then um I hope not I hope I don't I don't know let's see um if I come across really something really great you know then I'm then I'm almost forced to use it but um it you know and I I'm trying to think of some other images, but I don't do, like you see a lot of those in collages, scrapbook or collages, those kind of things where people choose words. And so I might choose a letter that I like because it might be a bold color that's so abstract and great. Uh, there is a couple great collage artists that basically do very abstract stuff with nothing but large letters. And, but they don't look like letters because they're all cut up and then he chooses them as the shapes. So that's kind of nice. And then I saw one recently that I thought, hmm, that looked interesting. It was an odd shape canvas and there was holes cut into it. And then, um, so he worked around the negative, around the hole. And then the, the, it was actually a painting, it wasn't a collage. So it's kind of a million things you could do, which is fun. Um, I do subscribe to the magazines coming out of New York City just to see what's going on in the art world, see what's up. Um, and there's a lot of, a lot of crap in the New York the art world right now. So um, makes me feel like, okay, maybe I'm okay up here in Minnesota, <laughs> but uh, you know, just working on, on paintings. Any other questions, Katie? What, what did anyone okay. say anything to you in the show? Um, I do have a, I have the whole show up now on the slideshow. If there's other ones that we didn't get to in the previous, if you'd like me to. Um, you can say, um, well, uh, how about the pink guy? We talked about him. The um, pink uh, Don Aurora, that one. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, because that was. Uh, oh, there's my snakes. Look at those beautiful snakes. How could you not like snakes? They're so great. My uh, mother-in-law said I should have a trigger warning at the show entrance for people who are <laughs> <laughs> afraid of snakes. Oh, these are pretty. Yeah, um, yeah I think. Those. Let's see. 
yeah, that was, oh, the planes. That one is another fun one. I really had fun with that. I think I'll go. But I like um, stuff like that, images like that. Um, and this one was based on a song too. Uh, uh, Lucas Graham, who is Danish, um, he this painting is was um, he has a song called uh, "Taking the World by Storm." And oh, I love that. That album was a wonderful album. And so um, it's kind of indie from Holland. And I thought, well, how would you take the world by storm? And then I've got all these guys flying around. I guess they are taking the world by storm. And so that's that's what that painting kind of. Oh, this is another one from a song. This is from Stone Coyote uh, album uh, called um, Four Times Gone, another great song. And uh, I just, it was about, um, a woman who enters another dimension and she sees uh, ladies standing with jingling earrings and you know it's the whole thing at four times gone. So there was my four ladies um, and so four was my theme in this one and um, and it's another one that I kind of just I just kind of lucked out finding all those images um, from different eras of four women and um, that's oh that's just a close-up of one of the triptych guys in there. Um, yeah, I think I'll try a pulp version next. Because um, that would be serious. Oh, here's this one here, Secret of the Yellow Sal uh, Fire Sal Salamanders. Yeah, Salamander is another favorite of mine. This is from the Wood Twisting Show. And there isn't much bent wood in this by the time I got done. But um, I kind of liked this one when I ended up. This one, this one did. I didn't dislike this one like I hated the others. Um, so, uh, you know, this one, and then this is, oh, that's from the Bob Dylan song. And then um, this is, okay, there's Pink Aurora, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was a color that, um, it started out a pretty bright pink. <laughs> it was really a deep, deep, rich, garish pink. And then I just kept toning it down and toning and jerking it around, but I didn't want to lose it all together. I didn't want it to become just a big flat blah. There was a lot of texture in this one, um, in the texture of the paint. And I like that a lot. And, um, and the colors are a little strange, um, but uh, I, I kind of, this is one I ended up liking, you know, so um, hopefully somebody else will like it. <laughs> but, uh, it's, it's different. But again, I try to, um, I try to change it up for myself. And it, it just becomes inevitable that the textures and the colors will be different. It just happens, you know, because I'm pulling from different piles. Um, that weirdo orangey looking thing over there on the right, uh, that's a shape I've used before. That one's pastel though. That's a, um, I did a pastel and then put, included it in there. So um, some of my favorite shapes and stuff will show up again. Um, if I kind of fall in love with them. I think that's kind of pretty much it, huh? Katie, of what was in the show? Yeah, I think so. I think, I think uh, yep, then we just come oh, to the, yeah. the ones from the, the panel. Yeah, there. yeah. Well, there's my little dog. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, th I thought I did have a couple wild dogs in this thing. Um, I had a lot of cats in this one, um, but I love that horse uh, too. And um, bats show up in my stuff, but I'm, you know, think. Remember, I'm selecting a lot for color too, colors and shape. Um, so if I need something dark or whatever, you know, it'll come out of that pile. And, um, and I don't. I use butterflies and insects a lot, but I don't want them to be butterfly-y like flower paintings. You know, um, so my butterflies are all a little different. I guess I don't. Know. I think so. Ask me a question if you've got a question. <laughs> and then I think we can go to the next one over. Okay, we're on that panel set. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, him. Uh, so I've got some oriental things in there. Salamander, he snuck in. More insects. Um, there's that horse. He's, you saw him used in Aurora. So he, he got reused. I use a lot of Japanese things. Um, uh, and this one also had an unusual piece of gold leaf, the stuff that looks kind of stripey. Um, that's, that's one that has been oxidized. Um, and I don't want to use too much of that. I kind of thought that was enough, you know, for it to be interesting um, and not be destructive. And then the other colors kind of work around that because the first thing I have put, do is paint. I paint the whole canvas like a maniac. And then I put 
the gold leaf where I want to put it. It might be a lot or a little, like in this one here, it's just a strip going across. And then um, I might paint a little bit more again and then retone everything. And then the collage starts after that. And uh, the actual pasting of pieces. So the background, um, I'm trying to get more and more brave about my background, my painting, more and more painterly. Um, and I'm really having fun with that. And you can probably make the next one go, I think. Okay, this was this had a lot of my leopards. And then turtles are another one. You can hardly see him in this, but in real when you're there at the gallery, you can. There's a turtle. Um, and uh, so anyway, let's see. Anybody got any questions about it? I got a lot of antique maps um, that I've been jerking around with color. So you will see a lot of those creeping up. Um, and oriental things coming in there. Uh, yeah, and this one here, I got mash, you get a dog in this one. Um, and this is pretty abstract. And of course, all of these in person, like the yellow, the, will connect to the one next to it. That was the main thing, trying to make them do that. That was very hard for me logistically because my um, easel only holds two 24 by 24s at a time. And then I took the old um, picnic uh, ping pong table and put three in a row there. And I started working on them. And then as they progressed, they got moved. <laughs> so they got closer to each other. And then they got, and then when they were really ready to go, then they got shifted over to the easel for gluing. Uh, so there was a lot of hoopla. Yeah, so uh, yeah, there are a lot of oriental kind of, um, cause I, I enjoy those shapes a lot. And uh, yeah, with the, uh, and Renaissance things or whatever, uh, along with uh, crazy things from sea life. Those are really lots of fun to use. And in this case, I took my favorite porcupine and I turned him into a different color. So, um, he loved, I love to shoot, cut him out. <laughs> so you have to figure that a lot of these are to my own amusement. <laughs> and, and I hope that they, they, they come out okay at the end. This has got a lot of Oriental stuff kind of in there. Um, my dad lived in the Orient for uh, almost a decade. So I was around a lot of Oriental things when I was a kid growing up, uh, seeing a lot of the stuff that he brought back from China and Japan. And, uh, so I guess I like those patterns, the abstract patterns and things like that. And uh, anyone finds a nice image, you can mail it to me. <laughs> I'll stick it in something. I'm always on the hunt. Uh, antique books, there's just, you know, the sources are out there. Sandra, you've done some collage, haven't you? Yeah. 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 So I'll, I'll bring us back to our group view here and see uh -huh. if anyone else has any uh questions or comments there are some nice uh, comments in the chat as well but if anyone else wants to um, jump in with any questions feel free yeah well, I appreciate you all attending and um, and I love sharing the work so um, hopefully they're they're fun to see <laughs> and I, well. first, I was gonna comment when I first saw your collages they were so different from all the other collages I had seen they're so painterly and flat and perfect. Normally collages were kind of chaos and ripping and putting things in there, but yours look really professional painting, you know, like you say, they're, they're paintings. Thank you. That's what I'm trying for. You know, I really am trying. I mean, I do have a lot of paper, like let's say Japanese paper and stuff, but um, I only creep those in, you know, because I'm a, I don't want to get too much into where I'm just doing paper, but I think those would work for a lot of smaller ones, you know, where I don't want to have a lot of paint. I mean, it just depends on uh, what I use. And I am using acrylic paint right now. It'd be fun to use oil paint, but oil paint is because of the oil and you paint, if you pasted paper over it, the oil would eventually seep through, you know what I mean? You'd have trouble controlling what happened with the oil. Uh, even if you, probably sealed it, you'd still have trouble with that. So you could do it on top, but you couldn't really put it underneath. And I don't know if it would make a difference. I do have an airbrush. I did a lot of my early stuff with, was with airbrush and pastel as backgrounds. And uh, that's, you know, it doesn't mean I won't return to that. You know, I, th I think it's sometimes it's nice to change the materials so that you're pushed out of the, the, the kind of the rut. You can get into a rut if you get too 
happy with something, you know, and I, I, I try to keep myself out of that rut by just going haywire <laughs> every once in a while. But you probably find that too with your work. I haven't gotten into the encaustic that you taught us up in Big Fork. Um, part of me is a little afraid it'll end up breaking off, like the wax would not be permanent. I don't know. Maybe that's wrong. We could do a coat, a top coat, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I like, you know, I like a lot of the textures that you can get with that, but um, I'm not sure how that would work. Yeah. Does anybody else have any questions or anything about the work? But um, just a reminder, you can uh, see everything on our website at macrostyartcenter.org and um, the exhibit will be up through the 28th, the last Saturday. Okay. In yeah, 29th. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 29. Yeah. And then I'm fortunate by uh, everything's going down to Duluth. Uh, I didn't realize that the June show in Duluth goes till September. That was news to me. That I learned that this week. That was a surprise, <laughs> and, uh, which is okay. Uh, and then um, I was also real excited to get into the uh, Bloomington artistry show, uh, but that's 2023. So I asked my son if I croak before then, please hold them down. <laughs> so I was thinking like 2023 sounds like a hundred years from now. <laughs> so, uh, but, and I, it's not a solo show, but I, I uh, hopefully if I'm doing a new series, that's what'll go there. Um, that's the trouble with getting old, yeah. <laughs> planning ahead for where all these are going to go. So, well, Really appreciate your questions and stuff and, um, and your comments uh, make me very happy because uh, you seem to catch into the, the fact of the painting aspect. So phew, good. <laughs> I really appreciate that a lot. Yeah, thanks a lot, everyone, for joining us. Um, Thank you. Great to have you all here and see everyone and um, hope we'll get to see you again soon. So Thank you, Katie. Yeah. Thank you, Carly. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Have a great night.